Good morning, Andrea. Good morning, Penny. Good morning. Good morning for those coming on. This is awesome. Nice to see everybody. Sandra, great to see you. This is awesome. Good morning. Good morning. Dwayne, good morning. Great to be together. This is great. Incredible. Well, we'll just wait a second here. Some others are come on, coming on. Denise, good morning. Say hi to Ken. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Anthony. Awesome to be together. Christine, good morning. Great. Judy, good morning. Well, welcome to the 40-day worship challenge. We're on day number 37 of our second challenge, and it's amazing again how quickly time goes by. We're taking one day at a time. We're just stringing days together. And it's so amazing when we can meet with the Lord every day and then put a series of days together and begin to see what God does inside of us as we give him the first 15, as we allow him to do something amazing inside of us, as we sit with him and we've talked about it, surrendering our will to his will, getting that over with, and letting him take control. What an opportunity. I could go off on that, but I've got some other things to share about. It's so amazing to spend time alone with God. And we, we're defining devotions that way. We're excited about the Lord. We're hungry and thirsty. Every day is new. Every day is exciting. Some days aren't quite, I mean, you sit there and you're not sure what's happening, but you know God's working deep inside. And some of the quietest days are the most profound days. So let's just keep journeying. I always say the graduals lead to the suddenly. So they were in the upper room and it was quiet and then there was a suddenly. And uh, God does that in our life as we just continue to endeavor to be with him every single morning. And I know it's a challenge. That's why we call it the 40-day worship challenge. And yet we're seeing the fruit of spending time in his presence, of abiding, of walking with him. I'm sure by now, day 38, you're already seeing fruit in your life related to meeting with him in the morning. Well, let me, let, I just want to say our shields are linked. I've got my coffee mug here. It says together. And, uh, uh, we're stronger together, that's for sure. And our shields are linked. I just wanted to read again our pilot scripture for practicing sword. It says in Philippians 4, 6 to 9, don't be pulled in different directions or worry about a thing. <laughs> don't, okay, don't be pulled in different directions or worry about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day. And that word there for prayer is surrender. Be saturated in surrender all day long, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. This is in the uh, Passion Translation. Tell him every detail of your life, then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ. So keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind. And fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. This is a prescription for mental health. <laughs> if we just did these things, we would be fine. And just so these are our pilot scriptures. Follow the example of all that we have imparted to you. This is what Paul's saying. And the God of peace will be with you in all things. That's what we want. We are practicing sword. S-W-O-R-D. That's our acrostic. And God wants, God wants us to act, act in situations. Act. Not react to situations and circumstances we face. So we're going to talk about that. A reaction is the first response we think or feel about a situation. Our first thought and reaction is not always the God thought. This often creates more strife and adds more tension to the situation. This happens because we are afraid and we try to fix the situation in our own strength. An act of control versus surrendering. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I spent a lifetime reacting out of fear. 
And it's been since meeting with the Lord that that has begun to change over this time. So we're practicing something new. We're practicing sort. The alternative to this is acting. And I want to, not acting like acting, but acting in the situation the way God wants us to act. Being the person in that moment, that, that ambassador, that person. This requires stopping and going to God first. That's what our pilot scripture is trying to show us. That anxiety is going one direction. We can't go that direction. We've got to go to the God way. We've got to go to God. And we've got to stop. Well, we talked about practicing swords. Stop and be still. Worship and wait. Open and observe. That's what we'll talk about today. Rest and receive. And then declare and do. And this is a process. And so that's what we want to talk about. We're on step number three today. Open and observe. It's critical at this moment that we open up our heart to know what God wants to say and do in any situation. Revelations 3, 20 and 21 says, Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in and we will share a meal together as friends. We've got to realize in that moment we have to open up our heart to God. He's right there. He's knocking at the door. He's always present. Actually, he lives inside of us. But he's knocking on the door of our heart because he lives in our spirit and he wants to commune with us in our innermost being, where our heart is, where our mind, will, and emotions are. And yet, if we react, then we're missing the opportunity to act. And so we want to invite God into our heart, into that place of presence, so we know what to do. Those who are victorious will sit with me on the throne, just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. I want to talk about that vantage point we have, that observation point, that place where we can see the situation from a different level, because we're seated with him, the Bible tells us, in heavenly places. In order to act, and this is in quotes, act, act the way God wants us to act, you need to follow God's leading. This requires hearing his voice above all the noise and confusion going on around you or even inside you. We first must establish a place of peace and closeness to him. We must be fellowshipping with God in the midst of the situation. Now, that's what's so powerful. You're in a conflict or a difficult situation and you don't know what to do. And in the midst of that, you're fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And chaos might be going on around you. And yet you're kept in peace, perfect peace. Now, that's the evidence that you're in him, that the kingdom of God isn't eating or drinking. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter what we go through. We can still have righteousness, peace, and joy. The devil comes to steal those things. We're not going to let him. This is the deep place of fellowship inside of us that we can have all day long. It's the simple act of opening the door of our heart to God and, and allow his presence to, excuse me, allow his presence to come in. It is that place within us that he dwells by his spirit and he's ready to help us at any moment of the day. I want you to whisper these words as you're having intimate fellowship with the Lord during the day throughout everything you're facing. Things like this, Jesus, help me. Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I look to you. Holy Spirit, come into my heart now. Whisper that prayer while tension and things are flying. Show me how to be, what to say, what to do. Invite God's presence to be with you. He, is, he already lives there. Let's just open up to what God has. Now, I wanted you to remember you have a vantage point. You're, you can actually be, when you're in the middle of the situation, an observer of the situation. That would be so different for me. Instead of being caught in it, I'm observing it, even though I'm in the midst of it, because we're seated with him in heavenly places. As we open up our heart to the fellowship and we become the observer 
not caught in it, but we're looking at it. We have a vantage point now to receive the next two steps so that we can act and be and become and do all that God wants us to do in the midst of any situation. This is so exciting. Now, what's ruling you in this moment, what, what, what's umpiring your heart is his peace. In Philippians 4, 7, it says, then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything you can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Now, I want to say this one thing. This is all happening in a nanosecond of time. It's in a split second you're making these decisions. This is so powerful. This is supernatural, not natural. Yet it affects every part of our psychology, how we think and feel, and our physiology, what chemical reactions are occurring within us. This is supernatural. This is what God is doing inside of us during these moments in time during the day. Let me read, uh, 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 my time's finished. Tomorrow we're going to do rest and receive step number four. But we're learning this process of practicing sword. Day 37, Psalms 139, 1 through 6. O Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I am going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. Now we're practicing sword. We're learning to walk with him in the day. Let's just pray. Commit this day to the Lord and thank him. Lord, we thank you for this day. I thank you for every person listening, Lord. We want to practice today, open and observe, to be, to be aware of your presence, to be seated with you, to be, know that we're safe, to have the peace of God mounting a garrison around our heart and mind. Help us to practice sword each day, God, to, to be aware of your presence and to look to you and see a change that we might not react, but we'll act in situations the way you would have us. Let us be transformed by the renewing of our minds, by the power of your Holy Spirit, and by your love and care for our lives. I bless each one listening. God, let this be a wonderful day in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want you to enjoy your time with the Lord. This is meant to be a primer just to that time. And have an amazing day, and I'll see you again tomorrow. We'll be on day number 38. Bless you. Have a great day. Bye.